Listen up, listeners of Book Geek Unchained. We are rebranding. That's right. The new title of the podcast will be Creative Magic Unchained. We will not only chat with the best authors. No, we will also chat with enigmatic, charismatic artists from around the globe, from musicians, singers, radio hosts, business people, photographers, and everything in between. So, I just wanted to tell you this. Hey guys, today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash fred. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, MP3 player. That's audibletrial.com slash fred. But for now, enjoy the show. Is this on? Good. Let's dance. Hey guys, welcome, welcome, welcome to the creative. Oh yeah, the creative magic unchained. Hey, I have a few questions for you. Do you aspire to a creative life? Are you tired of working nine to five? Are you asking yourself, what is the point of it all? Do you want to take your creativity to the next level? This is the place. This is a creative magic unchained. And this podcast is about unleashing your creativity. We talk to experts. We step into the unknown. It's an inspirational podcast. It's a magical podcast. It is an intuitive podcast as we chat with enigmatic, charismatic artists, from around the globe, musicians, singers, radio hosts, business people, photographers, everything in between. Welcome, I'm so glad to have you here. The tower of power, too sweet to be sorry, funky like a monkey, sky is the limit and space is the place. Oh yeah, I'm Frederick, bye. I'm your host, I'm a businessman, I'm a host, Uh, I'm an artist, I'm a writer, I'm a friend, I'm a partner, I am an animal lover. All right, this podcast is free. Every time you, every time you download it on iTunes or Stitcher, please go over there, subscribe, and uh, it is listener supported. So, hey, if if you know somebody, you know, who needs inspiration, who needs a boost, a creative boost, you know, um, uh, just share it, share it, share it with your your friends, um, and leave a fight, leave a review. Really, review really really helps for the algorithm. Uh, if you really like this show, hey. Help brother out. And for more podcasts, free gifts, Q&A articles, subscribe at frederickby.com. You have a bunch of stuff over there. You have a bunch of blog posts. And you have you have all the previous episodes. All right. Hey, you guys. You know, I always like to start off with something funny. And so listen to this. A lawyer and a pope died at the same time. Both went to heaven. They were met at the pearly gates by St. Peter, who conducted them to their rooms. The Pope's room was Spartan, with bare floor, army cot from, for bed, and a single bulb for light. They came to the lawyer's room. It was huge, with wall-to-wall carpeting, king-size waterbed, indirect lighting, cutter TV, stereo, jacuzzi, and fully stocked bar. The lawyer said, there must be a mistake. This this must be the Pope's room. St. Peter said, There's no mistake. This is your room. We have lots of Popes, but you're our very first lawyer. (laughs) All right, all right, all right, all right. (laughs) All right, let's start this off. Um, Hey, today, oh, I love this interview today. Uh, We're going to talk to Terrence Shemansky. He's a, let me tell you who he is. In the spring of 1996, he started a record company called 3000 Records. The label started out mostly as a concept used for the organization of a local compilation album in Kalamazoo, Michigan. I hope I pronounced it right. You know, I'm Canadian. I'm a French Canadian. <laughs> I'm just a French Canadian guy. So sorry for my accent. <laughs> After that first local project, another album was organized nationally. Uh, by the year 2000, through the use of the internet, the company started to slowly grow worldwide. And uh, since then, a variety of promotional services have been created and the label is used for helping musicians and other record labels with their promotional needs. Um, I mean, let's face it, you know, everyone knows the music business is tough, right? 
it is not for the faint of heart, and we're going to talk about it today. However, the, appro the approach taken by 3000 Record has been, I'll repeat that, the approach taken by 3000 Records has been to build relationships one person at a time, whether it's connecting with people in the music industry, you know, like radio DJs, uh, producers, etc., or connecting with other musicians, we realize the, the they realize the importance of networking. Um, you know, and with each connection, they have been able to continue to grow while helping musicians reach the ears of the music industry and music fans in an industry in an industry where there is a ton of noise and static. They cut through and reach people one on one. Hey. You know, I love doing this podcast, this podcast. I mean, I do it so I can reach, you know, I can reach out to people like this, guy, you know, like Terrence. So I can, I get to speak to these guys. I get to share these interviews with you guys. And today, oh, we dive into a bunch of deep subjects. We, obviously, we're going to talk about the music industry, but, you know, the music industry is just a reflection of most industries, you know. <laughs> I mean, if you're in the arts, if you're a painter, if you're a writer, if you're, I mean, you know, it's all a kind of the same I mean, there are differences, but they're very similar. And today we dive into the fears of lack of money, fears of rejection, fears of failure, fear, fear, fear. You know, it's a fear driven world. And uh, he's going to talk about and by his story, I can tell you this by his you know, listening to his story. You will be inspired to move forward because I was inspired to move forward after this interview. Uh, Terrence is a great guy an awesome guy, and I'm very glad to have him on this show. Um and you know you should really check out his podcast. Um, he's really a, a a good. He's he's man. He's got a lot of experience, and I love to talk to people like this. So, without further ado, we're gonna get to the conversation right after this. Hey guys, quick thanks to RadioGuestList.com, where you can find people to interview for free for free or if you want to be interviewed you can go there to radioguestlist.com thank you guys for your support and speaking of you listeners i want to hear from you i want to hear from you if you would like to be on the show to discuss a book you have written or that you loved if you have a book recommendation or you just want to chat Email me. I want to hear from you at info at frederickby.com. That's info at frederickby.com. And for advertisement offers, use the same address with subject advertising. Hello, hello. So we are, this is Frederick Bay and welcome to the Creative Magic Unchained. We are here with Terrence Shimana, Shimansky. Is that how we pronounce your name? <laughs> it's actually, uh, Terrence Shimansky. Shimansky. All right. All right. He's the owner of 3000 <laughs> Records, which is an organization that operates as an independent record label and provides music promotion services to other independent record labels, musicians and bands. And he's also the host of the Music Business Connection podcast. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you, Frederick? I am fabulous. I am fabulous. Good to talk to you. I think we're going to have a good conversation. That's good. That's going to be fun. I, I can feel it in your voice. That's going to be <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. So, uh, hey, man, you're doing, you're doing the business thing. You're the, the music thing. You're, you're, you're in this. You're doing the podcasting. Uh, you're busy. You're a busy man. Um, and you started back in 96. So give us an idea of your, of your background here before we dive into your, your current endeavors. Well, you know, in doing something that you like, whether it's in the music business or something else, if there is a passion there by, by doing that, for me, I've learned that I can keep pushing through and keep working even when things are tough. So when I started out with 3000 Records in 1996, I started locally in Kalamazoo, Michigan by just putting together a local compilation CD. And today that sounds like, whoa, a local compilation CD. I haven't heard that being done in so long. Mm -hmm. Back then it was a big deal. And I was so excited to be putting that together with local bands. And I am a musician as well. So 
as someone in a band at the time. I was in college. I was a lead singer of a rock band in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And uh, I put together this local compilation with many bands. I think it was about 17 different tracks on that CD. Turned out really good. And uh, it was a fun, fun album that came out and just was able to be given away for promotional purposes and sold too. I think some of the bands sold copies. Uh, we allowed them to sell them. And uh, it, it was something that the bands were excited about. It was great for the community. And then from there, I thought, why not take it bigger? Why not advertise and get bands from other states to sign up? So I started advertising in uh, local papers, and I had a toll-free number, and I was having people call a voicemail, and I would mail them an information packet, and I'd have to go to the post office, print more materials, hoping maybe they'll sign up and mail a check to me because they had to pay to be on the CD. It was a co-op project, so everybody paid to be part of it. And there's a little profit margin there. So it was nice to have that kind of part-time job, I guess you could call it that, in college. And, you know, after doing all that, at, t at the time, as you know, the Internet was gaining popularity. And by the year 2000, uh, after I graduated college, I realized how much could be accomplished by just getting people to sign up online and request that same printed information packet in digital form. So when they gave me their name and email, an autoresponder would send them the information packet. Mm -hmm. And to me, that at the time was revolutionary. I mean, compared to the work that it took the other way and the m amount of people I could connect with. So it was great to get going that way because the byproduct of that, and a lot of times in business, there's a byproduct. You don't know that what you're doing now could be something bigger later. The byproduct was so much bigger, and it was that I was collecting the names and email addresses of artists and bands from all over the world. It built a powerful email list that I use to this day, now over 13,000 plus musicians and bands around the world. Hmm. And I have many projects that I have put together online. And the purpose of these projects is to promote music. So being able to promote artists worldwide it's solving a problem. It's solving a pain point for a lot of musicians and artists that want to get their music out there, but they don't know what to do. They've recorded the music. You know, they wrote the music. They got in the studio. They paid the money to get it recorded or bought the equipment to do it themselves. They finally get that album done, and then they realize that it's not just about putting it on Facebook and being done with it or just putting it on CD Baby and being done with it. You have to promote it if you want people to hear it. So um, I'm constantly coming up with new ideas and new ways to promote artists. And that's where I'm at today, along with starting most recently the Music Business Connection podcast, which is my way of giving something back to the artists and bands for free to allow them to listen three days a week, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and connect with somebody new in the music business. Man, you're in the music business. Jeez, what's up with the music business? It seems like... Everything's just changed. I don't know. It seems like I interviewed, uh, I know I interviewed people in music and it seems like, I mean, what's up with that business? What, what do you, where do you think it's going? Because man, there are so many people love music. I mean, music is universal. You don't even know, you don't even need to understand the lyrics. You know, you just listen to melody and it's universal, right? So. I mean, where do you think music is going? I mean, or music business to make a living as, as a, a musician, you know? Because, because, because I just want to say before, and, and this is just me looking from outside in. Okay. So I'm not in the music business, but before it seems to me that it was more like that you had this label, this big music label and you kind of, you know, worked your way up there. Now it's like, it's shenanigans. It's like everybody can put out a musical album. And it's, I mean, where do you think the music industry is going? The music industry right now is in a changing or a chaos. You can call it that. But out of that chaos can come some beauty. So right now, a lot of people that were making money one way have to work a lot harder to make money the same way. And there's other people making more money than they ever did a different way. So to give you some concrete examples, somebody told me recently on the podcast um, that I do that that 
they know that a lot of music producers, especially in the Nashville area, are working like three times as hard to make the equal amount of money they were making just a few years back. Wow. You know, so there's an example of doing things where you have this hopefully secure job as a music producer and even somebody well known, you know, and you're producing people, but now you gotta work harder. Not not it's not getting easier, it's getting harder. You hope things get easier as you get older in your career, but um things change. Um on the other side of things there are people that have used, of course, we know stories of people who have gotten famous off of YouTube and people that have gotten famous off of MySpace back when that was more popular. And and we now know that with Spotify, there's people even getting known off of that. There's different opportunities constantly evolving. So it is important to be on top of things and to recognize what's going to be the next big thing. I'll give you another example. I registered uh, with Twitter back in 2008 because of a podcast that I heard. Most people hadn't heard of Twitter at the time. Um, and I was listening to a podcast. That I believe that podcast was about music marketing. And the host said, there's this new site called Twitter, and it's really great. And you really, really have to check it out. And as much as he tried to explain it on the podcast, I it went in one ear and out the other. I said, I don't understand what this Twitter thing is. I have no idea what is the point of this thing. But I hear the passion in his voice, and I know it sounds like this is going to be big. So I went on the computer, and I started registering many accounts. I thought, well, I want to make sure I have the right account. So I started getting different usernames, and one of them is music business. My Twitter handle today is at music business. Um, the, the benefit to that, of course, is that, I mean, now you'd have to have something so generic. It's They're all taken, just like the domain names. Many popular domain names back in the, in the 90s got grabbed up. If somebody could go back to the 90s and recognize that opportunity alone, and say, I'm going to go, you know, register 100 really popular domain names. I'm going to register, I don't know, even stuff that isn't that big of words, like cars.com. Okay, maybe that was hard to get in the, in the mid-90s. But how about, like, pooltables.com? How about musicindustry.com? How about um, furniturerepair.com? Those domains are valuable, valuable domains today. Um, somebody that registered 100 domains of about that equivalent of quality would probably be a millionaire today. And those domains back then were just, you just go on with your credit card and register them. But you'd have to recognize that opportunity back then. That opportunity's passed. It's long gone. I can't say what's the next big opportunity right now. But to really answer your question, it goes back to that passion. If you are passionate about what you do, you're going to make a way. You're going to keep pushing forward and work through so that you can do it. And that goes for whether someone's a musician or any career, really. If somebody loves being an artist, and I'm not just talking about wanting to be a rock star. There's something very different about the dream of wanting to be a rock star. Seeing somebody on stage and going, I want to be like that. I want to be rich. I want to be famous. I want to be better looking. I want to dress better. I want, you know, whatever. You know, that's that's having something. That's give me, I, it's about me. I want, look at me. I'm, I'm important. Okay, great. Really? If you went around like that every day, imagine going to the mall and acting that way. I'm so important. I'm so important. <laughs> no, who would be friends with somebody like that? You've got to work hard. The the people that I've met and the people that I've talked to, especially on this podcast, even uh, the, the person I recently interviewed, Bobby Kimball, the, uh, the original lead singer of Toto, <clears throat> you know the song Africa and Rosanna that won like tons of Grammy Awards back in the early 80s? Uh, in a song called Hold the Line that was a top 10 hit back in the late 70s. He's the guy. You know, he, he's, he's in the band, Toto, and, uh, he was in that band. And, and when talking with him, he's so humble and he just works hard. Even today, even today, he just works hard. And I realize that the people that are having full, long careers in this business, they work hard. They're passionate. They care about other people and they are willing to, um, keep pushing forward even through difficulty let me let me ask you this and this is what i i discovered in my in my life career business you know you talk about passion and it's interesting that you said that okay i want to be rich famous da, 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 but yeah 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 but you know who wants friends like you know with a person like that at the same time isn't it like everything that we do isn't it not about us You know what I mean? Like, I think if you think, okay, I want to make, I want to make music. 
I, I, I have to think it's not about me. It's about the audience, about the public. It's about other people. You know what I mean? I don't, do, I, I mean, I love what I do and it fulfills me, but it's, it's in the end, it's not about me. Do you understand what I'm saying or? I do. And it's very important for, for people to know that. I mean, you're, you're right on because for somebody to make it all about them, they're going to be posting and tweeting things like, check out my music, check out my new video, check out my this, check out that. I, I just wrote a new song. You know, that's me. I look at me and those are the posts that get ignored. You see the popular Twitter accounts yeah. and the popular social media are a very clear way to understand that if you make it all about you, you're not going to have many followers. People want things that they can um, consume that they can take in and learn from. Your podcast is an example. Why would somebody listen to this? Are they listening because they like you so much, Frederick, or they like me so much? <laughs> well, hopefully they yeah. do, you know, like like us, or, you know, they at least, you know, enjoy our voices and they, they go, well, that guy's talented. He's, he's doing a podcast or he's really using his skills in, in being a communicator. Okay, but the reason they're listening is for, for them to absorb some good information. They want to go, oh, I, I want to learn about how I can understand more about XYZ topic. That's why I'm listening to this radio show. Or I want to listen to this song because I feel good when I listen to it. I really enjoy it. Um, or I really feel a certain way. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling sad and I want to listen to a sad song right now because I can connect with that. So it, you know, it comes down to really those things, people being able to connect with other people and make it about somebody else. And that's where it gets confusing because if somebody's not used to doing that, they're like, well, how do I do that? Now what? I've always been just making things about me and that's it. So people, they get confused when they, think, okay, well, now that I understand this can't be all about me, mm -hmm. now what do I do? Mm -hmm. I, I don't understand. I'm so used to just, just writing songs that I feel like writing when I want to write them about whatever I feel like and, and not follow any format, not learn anything new, play the same three chords. It's just what I do. You know, ah, you, 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 once you reach out and you recognize when somebody understands that they can expand so much that they can start to understand that they can meet needs of other people. If you really, really want to get fans, you got to meet the needs of those fans in some way and pick a niche, pick something you're going to, you're going to kind of focus on. You want to focus on folk music, then, you know, picture those people that you want to write folk music for. You you want fans of, of folk singers, find uh, other folk singers you can emulate, admire and look up to and find the best. And this is what Bobby Kimball even said on, on episode 55 this past week of the Music Business Connection was, he said, to copy other people's best qualities. And I, I, he didn't mean it in a way of copycat. He mm -hmm. said, find the best thing they do. If you want to be the best singer, then find like, for example, 10 singers you really admire Listen to them over and over and find that one best thing they do and try to do it over and over and over till you can do it. And now you have the qualities of 10 of your favorite singers that you can put into your music. That's something you can really offer. That's something to offer other people by being able to do that. So there's a skill someone can acquire. And then, of course, in using that skill, when you record, write good music that appeals to other people, not in a way where you're just writing songs in a way where you're not passionate about it and you don't care, you know, just to make money. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about understanding what the crowd that you are writing to, who they are, understanding who they are. Just just realize who they are so that you, that somebody can actually connect with you. And that's where it comes out. That's where it comes down to being able to do things for other people, whether you're educating them, whether you're connecting with them emotionally, entertaining them, whatever it is. Let me ask you this, uh, because I hear you talk, uh, you hear, I hear these, these principles. These are the same principles that entrepreneurs use. It's never, but you know, it's you know your audience, target your audience. Um, to be a musician today, do you have to absolutely be an entrepreneur? Yes, you do, unless you have somebody that is an entrepreneur doing all the work for you. And that's what, really, that's what record deals were back in the day. I mean, somebody would just be an artist, and that entrepreneur would come along 
and say, I can do something for you. You're, you're an artist and I can take your music and sell a lot of records. So here, you sign a record deal so that I know that my investment in you as an artist is going to pay off and that you're not going to go to somebody else because you're signed with me now. And that entrepreneur would then work really hard to get that artist out there from the promotion and marketing to the sales and the distribution and all that stuff to recording it in the studio, making sure they have the best producer. Those things were done for an artist. And that that is something that does not happen today as often. So most musicians are in a position to be all those things. And how do you think overall musicians are are doing? Because and artists sometimes as artists we we don't think as entrepreneurs or business people. Like many artists their brain just doesn't work that way. You know what I mean? Yes, and that that comes down to a whole topic that man, we could do a whole podcast about that. I mean, if somebody really isn't a business person, then and they're really not going to be, it's just not something that they do. Then they need to find some people that can do that. They need to find a team of people that they're going to be able to have help them. You know, if there's something that somebody's not good at, then hire them to do it. Don't try to do it yourself. It's like I don't want to waste my time changing the oil on my car, even though I know how. But why would I want to go in the wintertime under my car and spend, you know, an hour getting all dirty and oily and then having to take a shower after and it takes two hours now because I'm trying to get oil off of my hands and everything. Uh, why would I do that when I can go for like 25 bucks and get an oil change done and they'll check the tire pressure and they'll check the fluids and they'll, you know, check the whatever, you know, they do all that's their job. That's what they do because that's what they specialize in. It's good to find people who specialize in something. There's a huge value there. And if an artist is very good at doing what they do, they just are a singer, then just be a singer. Don't be a singer and a bass player and everything else. Don't be, if you're really just good at drums and stuff, you know, don't try to do, don't try to become a lead guitar player if it's just not something you're meant to do. And the same thing goes for if you're not really going to become an entrepreneur and a musician at the same time then really don't try to do that if it's not your your niche. Um, and that's where it's tough. That's that's right there where things are difficult for artists because who can be everything? Who can do everything? It's very hard. Um, but, but you can learn. You can take that journey of growth. Maybe an artist can learn how to make a website and they really like managing their website and that leads to another thing and that leads to another thing. And a lot of Musicians today can become entrepreneurs because of everything they're learning as musicians. There's a lot of musicians out there, like I said, learning how to make a website and then they learn how to, you know, use an autoresponder. And the next thing you know, they learn how to make a marketing page and then they know how to do advertising. And the next thing you know, they go, well, you know, maybe I'll write a book. You know, they do something else. But when it comes down to being a musician, I think that th there's not an easy answer to that question. There's just not because the business models out there today are not as easy for an artist to just go, all I'm going to do is play music and wait for a record deal. And it wasn't always, you know, it's not like it was easy back in the day either. There's only so many record deals to go around. But the positive thing is that an artist can use their talents and abilities beyond just music and reach out to many, many people. Now, are they going to make a ton of money? I don't know. I mean, if somebody works really hard and gets their music out there, it depends on the music. It depends on who they are and how they perform and how they, you know, how many fans they get. But one thing that I can say is that if they're willing to be passionate and continue working hard, regardless of the money, regardless of maybe they're not that good of a web developer. Okay. So you don't have the best website. Find somebody that can help you improve the website. You know, that's the concept, but it's small steps. I think part of the difficulty with even answering this question is it's not just one big step. The big step in the past and the dream is just give me the record deal and that's it. I'm set. Step one, record deal done. No, 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 no. it's, it's a, it's a journey. So start that journey and continue that journey. All right. Just before continuing this conversation for you, the listeners of the book geek unchained podcast, audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity 
to check out their service. I personally recommend the audiobook The Hobbit by J.R.R. R. Tolkien, or you can choose the audiobook of your choice for free by trying audible.com. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash fred. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash fred. You will be entertained, and at the same time, you will help a brother out. So, everybody wins. Go to audibletrial.com slash fred for your free audiobook. Once again, we, 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 you're listening to the Creative Magic Unchained. I'm Frederick Byne. We'll, and uh, we, are, we are here with Terence Shumansky. He's the owner of 3000 Records, um, which is an organization that operates as an independent record label and provides music promotion services to other independent record labels, musicians, and bands. And Terence is also the host of the Music Business Connection podcast. All right, let's shift gears. Um, growing up, did you grow up in a family of creatives, of creative people? I did not. Um, I, I grew up, you know, my dad worked really hard for an insurance company for like 30 years. He worked for AAA. Um, and, uh, he went to work every day and came home at night and, you know, he, he supported five kids and my mom and my mom stayed home and raised us and um, my siblings are uh, also hardworking and uh, you know it, there's I guess you know when it comes down to being a creative person I, I'm kind of a creative person and a business person so I've combined the two I have this passion to create so I like to write songs and I like to perform and I still do I've I've performed more in uh, 2015 uh, I did than I did in like the past five years, I think it was it really, I, I really decided that I wanted to get out and play more shows. So I booked a lot of solo gigs and, um, I just performed solo me and a guitar and I really enjoyed that. And I made extra money. I mean, well, it was an extra money. It was money that helped pay the bills, but man, um, being a creative person, uh, is, uh, is something I'm very thankful for. It really is. What was the, mo- I mean, how okay so you, you, let's say you, you grew up it's time to make a decision to, to you know to 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 get a you know to to get where to to make a decision what you're going to do with your life 19 years old 17 years old whatever did you tell them that you wanted to be in music at that age no no i did everything i was supposed to i i went to college it took me seven years to get a degree. I worked very slowly but i knew that if i just kept going i would eventually get the degree so i didn't stop uh, even when it came down to just taking like one class, because I was failing everything in community college, and I finally took a psychology class that I got an A plus in. It was it was astonishing. I got an A plus. I I was happy. I, my confidence went up after taking that one class after like three years of college, because I was almost going to quit. And I ended up transferring to Western Michigan University in Kalamazoo, Michigan. That's where I got in a rock band. Continued with my education at Western Michigan University. Started three thousand records. Graduated from college. Did everything I was supposed to do. Got my resume out. I was in a professional business fraternity. I had an awesome resume. I was editor in chief of a magazine, uh, on campus and I got an awesome job right after college. Like it was like, boom, I beat out like a hundred plus people in, uh, job interviews and they hired me with a good salary, vacation, 401k. And two months later, they fired me for falling asleep Ooh. in a meeting. Oh, <laughs> I didn't okay. choose. Okay. I was kicked out. It wasn't like I was like, I, I want to be this. I want to do that. I'm not going to get a regular job. No, I was doing everything I thought I was supposed to do. And then I got kicked out after getting everything, after getting that job. Where do you go from there <laughs> when you get fired for falling asleep in a meeting? There, there's just there's such a signal like this is not for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. What was the breakthrough then? That made you decide, you know what, screw this. Yeah. I'm going to do music. The breakthrough. Thing. The breakthrough happened after two or three years, man. It wasn't like instant. I was very low. I had to be humble. I was, man, I eventually moved back with my parents. I didn't have money. What age? 26, 25. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And 
kind of yeah sucks. yeah <laughs> and and then I lived there and I all I had was like five bucks in my pocket every you know once in a while I just would have a few bucks and I didn't have a job I was just like well I can't just go back and keep getting jobs but I well I'll get a job I kind of like so I can at least make a little money so I got a, jo- a job. Um, uh, well, actually, the, I don't want to make this story too long. There is one little a- other aspect of this whole thing. I did get another good job after working at a gym. That one job I thought I'd like was working at a gym. So I worked at a gym, and then one of the people I was kind of training that I sold a membership to at this gym happened to be the owner of a tech recruiting company right before the dot-com bubble burst, and he hired me mm. at a really good salary, really good job. <laughs> like I got it all back. But this time, hmm. after working for him, and he's a friend of mine, but after doing that work, I quit. I couldn't sit in the job in the desk. I couldn't sit in the desk anymore. I couldn't sit there. I, my legs were like, I, I have to get up. I can't sit here. I have to go. I can't do this. It is, so I had to tell him, I'm like, I can't do this. So, the, so then I was really like, oh, my goodness. I got fired, and now I had to quit. What am I going to do? So I went, you know, got another job at a gym. And I just worked at a gym because I knew I could be healthy in an environment that was healthy, work part time and have money for coffee and gas where I went to open mic nights like four days a week. <laughs> I sat in a, in, a, in a room listening to musicians play and then I'd get up and play. And then I finally started booking gigs and I realized I could start make money, making money by performing. And at the same time, I was growing 3000 records. I was still putting out compilation CDs very slowly. Uh, I had a really awesome project called the New Union of Dance and Electronic Artists back in 2002 that came out with the top, some of the top mp3.com artists that did electronic music back then, like ambient music. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, over time, I kept growing the business very slowly. But that breakthrough, the breakthrough that you mentioned happened over time. And that's when I started making more money online running a business doing what I was doing very humbly, just going to open mics and listening to people. And it wasn't overnight. It wasn't like, oh, all of a sudden, now I just had this breakthrough and now I'm making money and I don't have to have a job. No, it was I was oh, always yeah, yeah. working. I was always just taking little steps. It was little steps, learning how to make a website, but then learning how to make a form on a website, then learning how to do this and learning how to do that and improving and improving and coming up with new projects. Um, in 2004, CD Register was huge for me. Uh, it's now called Album Register. But artists are getting connected with radio DJs all over the world through Album Register today. And that's been around since 2004, originally known, like I said, as CD Register. And man, I'm getting so excited I, I'm <laughs> talking about it because I just remember the first time somebody signed up for that website, the site wasn't even done. I had it online and I had it connected to like a PayPal buy button. And I'm like, why is there 20 bucks in my PayPal account? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Somebody <laughs> gave me 20 bucks from the internet. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Somebody gave yeah, me money yeah. online. I was uh, so excited. Awesome. That, there's a breakthrough. That was a breakthrough. Yeah. 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 It yeah. could have been a dollar. I mean, it really, it was just somebody gave me money online yeah. for something. Oh, it was yeah. amazing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, let me ask you this. Um, all right. We oftentimes we want, we want we want to be a musician. We want to write a book. We want to start this business, but we are fearful. We are we have all kinds of fears, you know, that bombard our minds. And and to me, there are many. I mean, to me, there are three fears that it seems that most people have. Number one is the lack of money. I'm afraid I'm gonna you know be broke my whole life. And number two is failure. Afraid of failure. Number three is rejection. Let's start off with uh, the fear of lack of money. What would you advise someone who wants to start in music business and, you know, is afraid? He's afraid he's going to be broke for his whole life and what, or whatever, you know, or, or they don't want to quit their job or, mm-hmm. you know, they don't want to do this. What, what would you tell them? Uh, when, when I was, uh, when I was living at home, um, I decided when I was living with my parents, I decided that I think I might have told my dad this at one point. Uh, you, I, I think I said, I just remember saying something about this. I would rather move to Hamtramck, Michigan, which is like you can get a $400 a month little studio upper level apartment there. I mean, cheap, 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 cheap. So I would rather move there and do what I like than go have to do things I don't like just to have more stuff. So that was a decision I made. Um, it doesn't mean somebody's going to end up having to live broke 
just because they do what they like. That's the illusion part because you think that's going to happen. Now, of course, if you if you have a nice car and a nice house and then you just decide, oh, I'm just going to write a song and I'm going to be rich. Yeah, you're going to – the odds are you end up not having your car pretty soon because they're going to take it because your payments aren't being made and you're not going to have that house. Yeah, it's very – it's something that somebody can be fearful about. But when you're younger, that fear isn't as great. So while you're younger, if somebody's listening and they're younger, understand that. If, if somebody goes through life and they end up a little older where they have a very vested interest in keeping their stuff, their house, their car, their – their girlfriend, you know, and then eventually, you know, being married with children, you have to do what you have to do. And I, that's what my dad taught me. He worked hard. He supported his family. And I admired, I admire, admired so much what he did for so many years, um, sacrificing. And I learned that you have to do what you have to do. So thinking that somebody can just be a rock star, well, then what, where's your priorities? And that's what it comes down to. Someone needs to decide what are their top five priorities. My top five priorities, okay, I can tell you today because I know what they were 10 years ago. They're the same. God, family, health. And, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting. Let me say this part again. (laughs) I haven't said them in so long. I'm wondering which order the last two are. God, family, health, um. And then uh, career and money. Okay, let me do that. My t- my top five priorities are the same as they were ten years ago. So here they are: God, family, health, career, and then money. And my career is music. Okay, but notice families before that. So if I have to go make money for family, that sets aside priority number five and four and three health meaning meaning getting a job exactly so it's not like the priorities are out of whack those are there's a very good reason i have them in that order uh the fear you asked about okay there's fear but then there's what you do about the fear okay you're afraid so what does somebody do when they're fearful they get anxious What, what do they do when they get anxious they twiddle their thumbs they bite their nails they do drugs they, they make stupid, stupid decisions, decisions whatever. <laughs> uh, gosh, you know, get away from that stuff, man. If you're, if you're afraid, then you're afraid. If you're afraid and doing things that are not good for you, then you're doing things that are not good for you. And that's not going to result in anything good. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's okay to be afraid. What about failure? It's okay to fail. Because as long as you get back up, as long as you're willing, okay, if you fail and you, you lay there for a while, that's fine. That's what I did. I failed and I laid there for a while. Like, like when I got fired from that corporate job, man, I, I just kind of stayed down. It was like getting knocked out in a boxing ring. It's like, boom, stay down. There's no reason to get back up right now. I stayed down. And I said, well, I'll think for a while. And I used to get out a notepad, piece of paper and write down my thoughts and ideas and I just laid low, you know, until I was ready to get back up. But usually when somebody lays low for a while and they do get back up after taking a lot of positive steps, they get up stronger. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about rejection? You know, it sucks to be rejected, especially, and some people, some people can't take it. Some people are so afraid of it, it paralyzes them. And, and, and indifference is even worse oftentimes than a no. Cause I know you have, you have a cause to fight mm-hmm. for. <laughs> but when it's indifference, when somebody meets your idea with indifference, it's, <laughs> what would you tell them? I drove a 1973 Plymouth Fury station wagon when I was 20, uh, 25, 26 years old, 27. Uh, I had the car for a year and a half. So somewhere in there and man, try, try getting a date with a car like that. <laughs> you don't want a date. You go if you go to the club, you're gonna park like four three four streets off. The, you don't want anybody to see your yeah, car. But you right? know what? I turned it around. I realized I didn't really care what people thought. In more times than not, people really was like, people really were like, "That's a really neat car, man." Now I wasn't lining up dates, okay, but but um, you know I. 
I got to say, as far as rejection goes, it's important to know who you are so that if somebody is rejecting you, you know where you stand and why you stand for what you stand and what what you believe and why you do what you do. And if you know those things, if somebody else doesn't agree, you can just say, well, they don't agree. Therefore, they're going to reject that. And that's their decision, not mine. I still will accept them. I'll still love them. It's important to have that confidence because it takes that confidence to really be who you are so that you can be creative. The creative energy is so important. And if that creative energy gets um, disturbed or taken away by somebody that you care so much what they think of you, well, then what? You're going to be a slave to them and do what they want all the time? No. <laughs> you got to find that line. You got to find that point where you say, no, I'm just going to do what I do. And this is who I am. And I'm not talking about in an obnoxious way. I'm not talking about I don't care about anybody else, so I'll just do what I do. No, I don't mean that. I mean care about other people, love other people. But if you know that you are someone who has a um, a strong uh, tendency to write songs and you really want to be an artist and you know that's who you are, you really know, not just I want to be a rock star type of thing. Okay, There's a big difference. Like I said, you know you're an artist, you know you write, or you know you paint, or you know you draw. Or you know you like, you know, whatever it is. You know that's who you are and what you do. So if somebody says, you know, you could make more money if you did something else, ignore that. Understand you're going to hear it. So don't get too mad at those people, even if they're family, when they tell you that. Why don't you get a real job? I've heard that before. Eventually, my response was when somebody said, why don't you get a real job? I was able to say, what do you mean? Why would I get a real job when I have a career making the same money I would make with your real job. And I get to do what I want, when I want, where I want, from my laptop, and play music. What, what would I do that for? And they don't know what to say. Because uh, uh, that's what they know. That's what they learned. And their intentions are probably even good. Their intentions are like, well, I want to see them like me, like with a good job and making money. and So they're going to say stuff like that. You know, today though, there's a lot of opportunity that older people didn't have. Okay. You can today, you can create stuff online to make money and have a lifestyle that's very different than our parents and our grandparents. Isn't, don't you find that, you know, the online world is unbelievable? Like, man, as you said, all you need is a freaking lap, laptop. I mean, that, that's my, you know, and you can carry that anywhere in the world. <laughs> I have an IBM ThinkPad. I think it's a 2007. Now, if the people who know me and know everything I do, everything, all 10 of my websites, 10 plus websites, the Music Business Connection podcast, what we're talking on right now on Skype, I'm using a computer that's eight or nine years old. All you need is a laptop. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you need a lot more than a laptop, but, but, but you don't have to have the fanciest, most expensive equipment, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, all right. What would you say to someone who fears he or she is not creative or a creative person? Find your strength and find the person who is creative in the area that you want. So if you're an artist and you want really good lead guitar on your album, then don't play the lead guitar. Find that lead guitar player to come in the studio or now they have all these sites online. You can even hire musicians online to play on your album and they send you the WAV file you know, find that person and surround yourself with people that are creative in areas that you are not. But most people are creative in one thing or another. Some people are creative in many things. Some people really only have that focus on really what they're creative with. Maybe somebody's really, really good at being like a manager type person. They're very good at focusing and they're very good at keeping things organized with them. Maybe they should go into being a music manager. Or maybe they need to get into a band and maybe they're, they're, they're pretty good at playing rhythm guitar and they can be in the band and they're good at doing background vocals, for example, but they're also the guy that does all that legwork for the band. Their strength would be in the management of that band, you know, and, and doing all the, all that other work. So everybody's got their strengths. Everybody's got their weaknesses. Once somebody knows what those weaknesses are, and many people have heard this over and over, especially an entrepreneur type, um, you know, advice, and that's to focus on your strengths. 
What would you say uh, to a young musician uh, or singer or, you know, what does it take to be noticed? Being different, but not obnoxious. Uh, there's too much of that out there today. You got now the music industry is filled hmm. with obnoxious pop stars. And some of them are freaking talented and really good. And I still like them, but I'm sorry. The things they do, the things they say, the way they get their attention is stupid. I'm sick mm, of it. Yeah. I like artists that make great music, are honest, good people, not doing stupid things, not just trying to get attention and being bad examples for other people out there. I like artists that are out there that have a statement. They say something positive. They sing about good things. They treat people right. They're using their talents and abilities in a way that sets a great example. Those are true artists to me. Those are artists that are out there that, that should be known. And unfortunately, we, we live in a society where that's not what always gets popular. So you have to decide mm -hmm. where you're going to be. Are you, you know, somebody going to be climbing and clawing to get up there? Well, what? Okay. So let's say you do. Let's say somebody claws their way up obnoxiously. They have the ability. Okay. They have the looks. They're, they're, they, they're at the right age. They have the right, you know, connections and they get the right song out there. And now they're popular. And then they start becoming an obnoxious person in the tabloids and all that stuff. And, and the next thing you know, okay, are you going to live your whole life like that? Is that what you want? Really? Do you really want that? Look at what you're going to look back at when you're older. Or would you rather have a great career? Look at some people that have had awesome, awesome careers. Um, let me give a positive example. Okay. And these are older artists, but let's take a look at some great artists just really quick. Look at the lives of musicians you really admire. Okay. And I, I guess like I don't know too much about the lives of of every artist and musician out there, but there's some great ones out there like Michael W. Smith. Look at him. Look at the life he lives. Look at his family. And I don't know much about him completely, but I'm saying just from what I do know about him. Look at the life of his family. Look at the the, the career he had. He had a top 40 hit. I believe it was top 40. You know, and then look at look at um uh you know just all different scenarios out there. What kind of life do you want to live as a musician or not? Like, where do you want to be? Do you want to be able to have time to yourself? Do you want to have a family or do you just always want to be in the limelight? Do you always want to be having to keep up with everybody else as your looks are fading, especially for women, as their looks are fading and they're heading into their older years and they're desperately trying to keep up with, you know, their looks. They're, they're still putting themselves out there looking all, you know, this and that and they're old. It's like, oh my goodness. Seriously, how about having a look that's more dignified when you get older so that it's respectable and a good example to other women, not a bad example. So it's important for men and women to recognize that and to understand that they are setting an example every day with what they do. What kind of legacy do they want to leave for other people to, to, to see them in what light? All right, we're going to wrap this up. If you are stuck on an island... Uh, by yourself, 500 bucks in your pocket, a laptop, and internet connection. What would you do the next seven days? I never think I would get a question like that. Um, <laughs> mm. All right, instead of just being funny and trying to come up with a funny answer, I'll try to give you a serious one. Um, you know, I'd probably, man, honestly, the first thing that's coming to mind, now that I'm kind of letting my mind drift a little bit on this topic, dude, I would enjoy the island for a little bit. If it was, you know, at first I would kick back. I'd be like, I'm going to go in the water. I'm going to crack open a coconut. You know, I'm going to lay back in the sun. I'm going to take a break here and relax and think about what is it that I want to do? I'm going to lay low. I'm going to lay low for a little bit and I'm going to, I'm going to figure out my situation. What can I do with this laptop right now? What can I do to, um, to start with where I want to start at, whatever it is I want to do, uh, whatever, whatever, you know, if it's the music business again and I was starting over and I just had this, this 500 bucks on some Island, you know, I, I would take it easy and lay low until I figured it out because you can't always figure it out right away. It's not like, Oh, I'm just going to do this, this, and this. Of course, there's always the answer of, well, I would, I would get the best social media accounts and get all the right usernames. Of course, line up your, your, your brand. That's something I would eventually do with once I did figure it out, I would have a consistent brand. You know, for, for me, it's 3,000 records. That's the brand I stuck with. If I didn't stick with that brand, 
I wouldn't have anything consistent to go off of on the other 10 websites that I have of, of who created those websites. Who's it by? Brought to you by 3000 Records. Um, so reputation is important. If you're in this business for a long time, then people can know that you're reputable because people in the music business that are not reputable aren't there anymore <laughs> after a short time. Um, so yeah, that would be my answer. I would enjoy the island and lay low until I figured out what I wanted to do and then do all those right things to get out there. All right. Where can you find you and buy your music? Well, you can find me at 3000 records.com. My email address is go the word go G O at 3000 records.com. You can also listen to the Music Business Connection podcast by going to musicbusinesspodcast.com. And it's also on iTunes. It's called Music Business Connection. Once again, I'd love, love to be able to have you check it out and enjoy it. And I'm speaking to the listeners and you, Frederick, um, and, uh, and just, you know, delve into it, man. I've, I've learned a lot doing this podcast. It's been a blast. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Thank you. I learned a lot too, man. I learned a lot too. It's always fun to start to, to talk to people who, you know, uh, who, man, you're immersed in this, you know, you're in the field, you're doing it. That's always inspiring. And I love that. Thank you so much, Frederick. It has been total pleasure being able to be on your show and your questions have been fantastic. Thanks again. Awesome. All right. His name is Terrence Shamansky. He's the owner of 2000 Records. Go check that out. He's the host of the Music Business Connection podcast all right guys hey how was that how was that man oh thank you terrence thank you terrence for your honesty for your genuineness thank you for your authenticity thank you for and you know what much success to you because you deserve it it was i i had a blast talking to you it was fun you're you seem to be like a very simple guy and uh, i know my audience uh you know enjoyed enjoyed this conversation So uh, thank you for this insightful conversation. Um, what a wonderful, kind guy, a kind dude. And I love, 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 love these kinds of conversations. So, hey, um, go check out his podcast. Go, go, go check out his work. He's really, really, uh, you know, man, he's hustling. He's a hustler. <laughs> All right. So, guys, uh, it's time for me to ride off into the sunset. So right before we do that, what you are going to do now. What you're going to do now is subscribe for free to our creatives community on frederickby.com so that you may be the first to receive to receive the latest episodes, free gifts. That's right, a free audio gift. And um, and you guys also inspiring blogs. If you need inspiration, you need to get out of your comfort zone. Go now to frederickby.com. And enter your email. Everything is free. Everything is everything is cool, and uh, and that's it. With this, stay safe, and don't forget, live with purpose, passion, and love. Bye bye.